hot on the chase. On the run, they have a dozen police officers behind him, both Houston police officers as well as, I believe, county, uh, uh, county sheriff's deputies. Andy Bass, live in Sky Eye. Where is this located now, Andy? Uh, he just exited off 59. I'm not too sure exactly what he exited off to. It could have been the belt. It could be the loop. I'm believing it is the belt itself. Uh, it looks like he's heading eastbound along the south belt right now. Uh, you could, as you just mentioned, several police officers in tow behind him. It is that minivan that is in the middle of your screen. He is now headed eastbound along the south belt. Get him back in the screen. And Andy, we see this That's all the time. They right continue now. to run, but yet most don't get too far, and that it usually comes to a quick end and sometimes a dangerous and an ugly uh, end, which is sadly sad and unfortunate. But they've been chasing this guy for around 15 minutes. Any idea as to why he is on the run? We're still trying to figure that out. The news desk is trying to grab as much information. I know this has been going on for at least the last 10 to 15 minutes, as you just mentioned, Art. You know, starting off way down south along 288, and the belt itself is where we tried to intercept him. Uh, got a little bit discon uh, discombobulated to where exactly he was, but we did pick him up along 59 and the belt, and that's where he pretty much exited just right now, is on the eastbound side of the belt. Looks like he's actually slowed down a little bit, trying to get in a little tighter thing. If there's anything wrong with his tires or not, but this side seems to be okay. But he definitely has slowed down quite a bit since we have joined the taste. You see He's the gonna, door someone's going right to jump now. there. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Look at this, uh, Andy. Someone's jumping. Whoa, off the edge. It's a long fall. Yeah, that's at least a 25 foot jump there. But both of them jumped. Now they are on the run and seemingly surviving that fall. Now running across the street. Let's see if the officers fo follow them at this point. I don't see any yeah, officers on hot pursuit right behind him, Andy. Do you see anyone? Unfortunately, no, because they went over the overpass. Yeah. They went right down onto the feeder roads, so they're running across. They just ran across the feeder roads. They're now into a parking lot of a building. I'm just going to come back out a little bit more. You can, you can see it's definitely we're on a, a, an now. industrial park area. Yeah. And now they're trying to hide from us and from everyone else. Now they're just hiding on the other side of this building in this little area. Those lanes. Um it appears, where that chase ended. Right, and it appears there are two suspects that police are now looking for. You saw both of them just go on the side of that building there behind a fence into some of the, some of the trees that are there. Uh, the Sky 2 is zoomed out quite far, so it's hard to get our bearings on exactly where officers are at this time. Uh, but you can see that there uh, is one, both of the suspects there right it now. It looks like they're trying to jump over that fence right there. And this looks like it may be a commercial uh, parking lot area, sort of an industrial area, uh, not too far from uh, a neighborhood. And we believe we are in the Missouri City area. Um, and that may have been the beltway that we were, let's see if, uh, if Sky 2. Yeah, hard to get a good shot of the suspects. Bit. We need them to zoom back. Okay, they've slowed down a bit. They're sitting down. Uh, Looks like one appear to be out of down. breath from running, to right. running so fast, trying to get away from police. One suspect is laid face down on the ground. The other is just sitting, sitting there, there in an empty parking oh, space. Oh, looks like um, an officer may be approaching. Officer approaching. With okay, caution. and so the other one is lying down on his back with his hands up. Here comes another police officer with his weapon drawn as well. It appears the suspects are following the commands given to them by the two officers who are there on the scene right now. And so we were just told the, the chase ended at the uh, Beltway and West Airport. Um, so in southwest Houston, looks like a third officer um, just joined but one sus just joined the suspect. That's mm -hmm. right. They've got the suspect's hands behind his back so they can handcuff him. Uh, the other suspect's sitting there as well. Uh, in that parking space, the other officer trying to get the cuffs around him. You can see two more police officers, another two. So this is turning into quite a scene out there on the southwest side of Houston right now. We, of course, do have a crew on the way to the scene right now. We're going to certainly bring you more information uh, as soon as we get it.
Still trying to gather more details from the newsroom uh, at this hour as well, trying to find out exactly what sparked this chase. And how long it lasted, too. Um, we know that it ended in southwest Houston in Missouri City, and those lanes are still blocked on the Beltway in that area at West Airport. Um, and so lots of congestion in that area, but right now police are not only on those lanes, but they are uh, uh, investigating that situation. Looks like both of the suspects in handcuffs. Stop by, I, I saw them slowing down, and all of a sudden that, that door just opened up and the two obviously jumped off of it. I'm not too exactly sure where that stopped at. Go ahead and take swing that camera around, Andy, and let's see if we can take a look at, um, at the Beltway. Again, this was the South Beltway headed eastbound. Um, there you have the officers, there is the van, uh, clearly the doors are open. That edge right there, there's at least a 20-foot drop or so, but not sure whether they have anyone in custody, um, but perhaps they do, not sure. Yeah, we're hearing that they do indeed have at least two other people inside that van in custody. You can see uh, at this point they are at least blocking a couple of lanes of traffic as police surround that minivan and uh, no doubt uh, got a long investigation ahead of them at this point. So it looks as though at least two lanes of the video. Well, and we do want to take a look at the yeah. end of this chase one more time. We saw the minivan, which reached speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, come to a stop. Two, look of, at the, two of the people inside that van jumping over the side of the freeway uh, and then taking off on foot. Uh, hard to believe that they could make that long jump and then get yeah. up and immediately and start running. That was a pretty hard fall yeah, for at that least really that was. first guy. And you know what? Let's yeah, rack that up again and go ahead and take another look because that's the drama of this whole scene. Unfortunately, uh, of course, them the driving 100 miles an hour is crazy enough, so running, trying to elude uh, police, police the but then road taking road that leap of faith over that edge, a 20-foot drop there, and that guy first landing nearly on his bum first instead of his legs. But wow, here they are in custody from uh, Sheriff's County deputies as well as, as HPD on the south side of town. It is at Gessner, Esner, and South Beltway. Beltway at they South They were Gessner. headed eastbound. And actually, Andy, you know, you've covered a lot of car chases uh, working with us over the years now. Not very often that we see a minivan as the, uh, as the escape vehicle of choice, is it? And no, not, not too often that we see a minivan as the escape vehicle, especially with four males piling out of it. I remember that we did see uh, two females uh, a couple of years ago pile out of it, and that was a little interesting that we never see females. But yeah, a minivan uh, full of guys, not usually what you see as uh, someone running from the cops. We're still trying to figure out exactly why they were running from there. But you see those two in custody that did take off from the belt and then run southbound and then get arrested here at this uh, industrial park uh, just off of Gessner, just a little bit uh, east of Gessner. Yeah. I think they thought they'd ended. be able to get to hide out there at that industrial park, uh, but their freedom was very short-lived, as we all saw. Uh, yeah, they, they ran around the side of the building and ran right into the arms of police officers there. They did not get too far. Again, this is the, the Beltway, the South Beltway, headed eastbound. And uh, go ahead and push in just a bit, if you can, Andy, on that, on that traffic that's uh, beginning to gather there. A couple of lanes shut down as a result of the chase. You can clearly see several officers there, and then the backup beginning to accumulate there on uh, headed eastbound, again on the east beltway, or the south beltway, that is, at Gessner Street. So what a backup there. But these guys did not get too far. They were essentially jumped over the edge, ran across the field, and right there at the industrial park, uh, being caught by police, who were able to get off. And, and Andy, it was off. kind of hard to tell uh, as we looked at that minivan whether or not perhaps their tires blew. Uh, I don't know if uh, there were strips that were thrown out at any point, but it looked as though they almost slowed down because they were not able to go much faster. Um, as you pull hey, in. I know. I know they tried to do strips earlier in the chase when we were uh, trying to get to them. Um, I was looking at the left side of the vehicle when we first started joining the chase, and I saw all those tires intact. And looking at the right side, those tires are intact as well. So it doesn't look like there is any uh, problem with that. Uh, they were just maybe just slowing down because they realized they were not going to go much farther. Uh, a lot of police were behind them. They had uh, three choppers up in the air over them. So they probably much figured they might as well just try to run away um, and sort of just trying to drive away. Yeah, and as we look here, we're trying to determine whether or not there were other people in the back of that minivan or if uh, indeed what we're seeing are people in custody inside of one of those squad cars while they look through the minivan to figure out exactly what went uh, what went down there today not sure again why they yeah, were I, running we have no idea at this point yet is that correct Andy 
Not sure if this still is. Still don't a... know reason. Yeah, we still don't know the reason why they were running from the, the police initially. Uh, but you could see them going through the van, looking at it very carefully. I did see them look into the back of this vehicle right there and talk to one of them. So it looks like they at least have one other in custody here, maybe possibly two. Uh, we're still trying to figure out if there were complete four people in that van or three. But as you can see, the officers are just looking over the side to see how far they actually jumped. Yeah. They're probably just amazed as we are yeah, how it, far they did. And interestingly enough, we didn't see any officers follow them over the edge. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good fall. There's a TV. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, we can assume van. one thing, um, at least, you know, to the degree of, of what they have been able to find in the van, perhaps they were being chased for a, an alleged robbery. We don't know that, but they're clearly taking out a big screen there. Um, yeah, not usually right what you car. see in the back of a minivan, <laughs> is it? They got some other belongings there they've been able to collect as well. You can see all sorts of, well, those look like women's bags. Yeah. Push yeah, in on those. Like uh, yeah, yeah, push in on those. Uh, that looks like you're probably as far as you can go there, but that looks like yeah, exactly. yeah, some high-end uh, bags there that they've been able to collect. Yeah. Well, Absolutely looks like they found uh, quite a... Something. Yeah. Well, and Andy, this is a complete aside, but I, but I will mention it. It's interesting that uh, nowadays we see more SUVs and more trucks uh, in, um, in, as part of the police officer's arsenal as opposed to just simply squad cars. Yeah, that is correct. I believe that the, the Crown Victoria vehicle that's coming in your screen is no longer being made by Ford, and that's why they all went to the SUVs and the later models. You do see some of the vehicles still in the uh, in the old style, but a lot of them have gone to the SUVs, especially the constables, the Pearland police. Uh, Sheriff's Office, I believe, are still in the Crown Victorias, but for most of them are using the SUVs now. Yeah, probably a little bit more speed there as they get involved in these yeah, high-speed chases. a little bit more power as yeah. well. Um, Wow, what they've been able to bring out of that uh, that van there, pretty amazing, you know, big screen, flat screen TVs, Gucci bags, and well, we don't know if we they're don't Gucci, know if they're Gucci but, but we do, <laughs> we do know, know they're bags. They're, that is for we sure. We do know that they're high end bags. Are we able to rack up that video uh, once again? Uh, when those two took that um, jump over the edge because the that was a lot of drama here involved. That's, that vehicle, that's when it slows down, and you can see the guys here. Whoa, there they go, one right on the side. Uh, lucky that he did not break an yeah, ankle or something. Yeah, I was going to think, yeah. With that you know, kind with of that belief. kind of fall. But there they go, clearly running across the street uh, into that open field, into that industrial area, uh, trying to yeah, elude yeah. police, trying to hide from them. But then the officers were able to quickly maneuver themselves into that area yeah, and then capture it. them right on the other side of that building. They run down this alleyway and then they run back. And At then one they point run they into that split field, up, but right. then they uh, end up trying to hide behind those hedges for a moment and yeah, get over the other side. Yeah, they don't know where side. to go. Wow. Yeah, why don't we go back right now to Andy Bass, who is live over the Beltway there at South Gessner, where they continue to search through the minivan that uh, these guys were in. And we've at least seen one large screen TV, and I do mean big screen, coming out, and what appears to be a, a lot of women's handbags. You can see as well the backup, because as we've been telling you, uh, at least a couple of lanes have been taken over by police officers as they continue to do the investigation, which means that uh, people are having some difficulty getting around them. But we're looking at both the feeder road now, um, near where that industrial park is, and as Andy continues to pull out, you can see the beltway and you can see just how slow the traffic is moving at this point. Andy, have you been able to, uh, at least from your perspective, see anything interesting happening over there where they uh, were able to capture the two, two guys on the run? For the most part, everything is status quo, Art. You can see that one lane on the northbound side of Gessner, along with that median, is shut down right now. All the activity is still in the parking lot of this uh, complex right here. You can still see one of them is still sitting on the ground, not too sure if he got injured. They might have gotten injured in the fall, and they're probably waiting for an ambulance or an EMS uh, unit to come on scene and check them out. Uh, you don't know what happened there, but they're definitely not moving them here from this area. This is where they laid down and gave up, and that's pretty much where it stands on the Gessner. Uh, aspect of it. Going yeah. back to the belt, let me pan back out and show you. This is still going on. You can see how many uh, uh, units are still on scene going through that to see how much there is. Uh, a lot of paperwork is going to have to be done here. Three lanes are still blocked off on the eastbound side of the south belt, just a little bit past Gessner. So if you normally take Gessner to the belt, you might want to just find a different alternate until they get this cleaned up and moved out of the way, but it looks like it's going to be here out a while. Yeah, and we're yeah. certainly curious to see whether or not there are going to be other interesting articles coming out of that. <laughs> Out of that minivan. Here's another guy right oh, now, Oh, now guys. we do see, yeah, yeah one of the other guys in custody. 
Yeah, he okay. was another one that was just yeah. brought into custody. So there's at least three. Uh, I believe they were talking to the guy on the back of it. This might have been the guy out of that SUV mm -hmm. right there at the left side of your screen that they were talking to when we were showing you it earlier. Uh, so at least three people have been arrested here so far. Still trying to confirm if there was a fourth one or not. Okay, now we can clearly see as well that, uh, and we, we've been saying HPD, but you know what? We, we clearly see that their Pearland police is actually involved in this. So uh, we see constables, officers there as well. Um, I believe that's an HPD vehicle. So we have several agencies involved. I, I counted at least a dozen uh, law enforcement vehicles at this scene. And then over there where the other two were apprehended, there were at least a dozen more vehicles. So we, we, may, we have a couple of dozen vehicles, law enforcement vehicles involved from Pearland Police, HPD, and the Constable's Office. And it all began in Pearland, where we understand these guys, at least according to information which we just received, were visiting the home of someone, uh, asking for information about someone or trying to visit the home of someone. They, they weren't there. It, it was a suspicious call that started this. When police arrived, uh, these guys immediately just fled and didn't stop. And now as a result, we see here that they pulled out a flat screen TV, several uh, likely designer bags. And, uh, but they have been nabbed, at least four of them, we understand. Now we see one here at this scene, two at the other scene. Uh, we have not seen a third one here, or a fourth one here, I should say, but, but we do know that there may have been at least two here at this scene. Yeah, and what we do know is that these uh, young men, and we're assuming they are all young men, uh, appeared at a home in Pearland and asked for someone who did not live there, asked for a strange name. And perhaps the homeowner or one of the neighbors got suspicious and contacted police. Contact, right. And that's when this chase began. At one point, going at speeds of well over 100 miles an hour. And as we've been talking to Andy Bass up in Sky Eye, we sort of uh, reviewed many of the we review many of the car chases we've seen over the <laughs> over the years, and rarely do we see a minivan moving yeah. at that speed. <laughs> uh, but perhaps in the end, uh, it just simply was not fast enough to outrun the police as we saw them jumping over the side. Yeah, eventually giving up right there. Again, this is the Beltway at South Gessner Street, all coming to a dramatic close. We're going to have much more on ABC13.com, much more later in this newscast as well, because we have a crew on the way, and we'll get back to it momentarily. But